this control unit what they should do is this should generate uh, not only uh, not only the uh, uh, control signal for for the multiplexer but it would also generate control signal for the components based on the instruction type if you see this diagram then you would see the blue lines generates the control signal for uh, different different components now if you look here this is register right when you perform the right back operation that means let's say load uh, uh, load of op load operation or add operation we have right back operations to write something inside the register file we need write enable signal which is register right signal without this write enable signal we cannot perform the write operation in any of the register remember that when we are performing read operation that is we are uh, we are taking input from the source uh, source registers we do not need any kind of uh, read uh, requ uh, read enable signal but for performing write write uh, operation that is that means when we are trying to, when we are trying to change the content of any register we need to have register write uh, uh, signal then if you go to the data memory then you would see we have two signal one is memory read and memory write so when do we need memory read operation when we are executing load operation because in load operation we read a memory and then take the value that we just perform the read uh, uh, and uh, write it back to the register file so to perform a read operation in a memory we need read signal and perform a write operation in a memory we need to uh, perform the we need need to have the memory write operation uh, uh, a memory write signal enable so in case of store operation we need to have memory uh, write signal enable uh, uh, for example if we have this memory write signal enable then whatever the address that alu generates a, a write operation is performed on that memory address once we have memory write a, a signal enabled logic design basics informations are encoded in binary we all know that low voltage is uh, considered as zero and high voltage as one and one single uh, where carry one bit so for multiple bits we need to have multiple uh, where a uh, bus we are having multiple where now combination elements operate on data an output is a function of inputs and state elements or sequential elements is stored in uh, store information now combination element whatever you uh, you, you uh, feed inside the in the in the input it just generate the outputs based on some uh, some function but it does not store anything that means when you provide the input it instantly generates the output so if you want to have the output at a later time that uh, then you would not have it but in in case of state elements it can uh, store the uh, output or uh, it can store hold on to the result for example flip flops flip flops or memory elements it can hold on to the data unless it is uh, changed uh, uh, using some uh, operation or, or so but in case of combination element for example alu you provide input to the alu and it would just generate the output but it cannot store anything so combinational elements we can see combinational elements and gates uh, two inputs and it would generate the output a and b adder it would generate the generate a plus b if you look in this diagram multiplexer based on the signal that uh, the based on the uh, uh, selector input that we provide it would uh, output to i naught or i1 and arithmetical logical uh, uh, operation or in in alu uh, a and b based on the uh, operation that we request the alu to perform it would perform the output would, would be would generate based on the operation alu generates sequential elements registers store data in a circuit use a clock signal to determine when to update the stored value and their edge trigger update when the clock changes from 0 to 1 as it is this this is a, uh, this is a diagram of a flip flop or a block diagram of a flip flop as i just uh, said in the previous slide that flip flop can store information unless they are asked to 
change uh, change it they can hold on to the information sequential element register with write control so only update on clock edge uh, edge when write control input is one we can see uh, we, we we saw it in 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 the general data uh, path diagram that we had register write signal control unit was providing a register write signal based on that register write signal that means that register write enable signal only when the signal is enabled we can perform a write back operation this is what it says that control uh, when uh, when write control input is one used when stored value is required later so again this is this is a, a, this is diagram block diagram of a flip flop now clocking methodology Combinational logic transforms data during clock cycles. So between clock edges, see uh, this is this is clock edge. So uh, input from state elements output to state element. So what what happens is one state element outputs something and feed it into the combinational logic and combinational logic performs some operation and outputs it into the state element. Now, longest delay determines the clock period. If, if from here to here is the clock period. Now, longest delay means what are uh, what instruction or what are the instructions that takes uh, the longest to perform the or uh, finish its execution. Because in a single cycle implementation, we, we consider that this this one cycle uh, is enough for executing any instruction. So if that is the case, then we need to make sure that this one cycle, this uh, one cycle is enough to accommodate all the instruction. Now, if we consider MIPS instruction, we have R type instruction, we have I type instruction, and we have J type instruction. We need to identify among these three types of instructions which instruction is the one that takes the longest time to execute and the answer is load load takes the longest to execute why if i explain the stages load uh, load covers when it it finishes it finishes its execution we have decode stage sorry uh, the if if i go by the component then then uh, it uh, program counter generates the memory address then instruction memory then uh, register file then uh, alu then data memory and from data memory it needs to come back to the sorry it needs to come back to the uh, re re register file not uh, not instruction memory it needs to come back to the register file for performing the write back operation so in the data memory stage it performs a read operation and then takes the data and writes it back to the register file so load load covers the maximum duration load takes the maximum duration when it it is executing in case of yes there is memory operation for store but for store we just only perform write operation in the data memory stage not any write back but load has write back stage associated with it after performing the data memory read operation that's why load takes the maximum amount of time so when we are deciding on the clock cycle that means this one a uh, clock period that means this this one we need to see how much time load requires and that time is uh, is our clock cycle uh, period uh, or clock uh, uh, or clock period now uh, building a data path data path elements that process data and addresses uh, addresses in the cpu so we already know what is the data path what is the definition of data path we have registers we have alu we have multiplexers memories and so on these are the components that you can find inside the data path so we'll build a mids data path incrementally incrementally means we'll build it gradually we'll start with a smaller portion and then we'll, fi we'll uh, finally add them up to come up with the entire data path. instruction fetch we already have seen that in in, uh, in the life cycle of any instruction we have three stages one is instruction fetch then decode and then execution 
So any instruction starts with instruction fetch. And we also know that for instruction fetch, we need program counter to provide us the memory address inside the instruction memory from where the instruction will be fetched. So in instruction fetch cycle, uh, the hardware that are associated or that are involved in, in instruction fetch, we have program counter, we have instruction memory, and this, this adder is used for incrementing the program counter value by PC plus 4. This is all right when we are executing uh, sequential instructions because for sequential instruction we all know that the next instruction will, uh, next instructions memory address will always be PC plus 4. So this is the setup for this uh, this entire entire diagram this is the setup for performing the fetch operation. So what we have we have program counter then instruction memory and adder which increments the program counter's memory address or the memory address that program counter generates by 4 which points to the next sequential instruction address in the memory. So R format instruction. So for R format instructions, uh, what do we need to do? If, if we uh, have any, uh, any R format instruction, then uh, what, uh, what the instruction format would be or uh, if, if I write here, write it here, uh, add 10, 11, 12. So let's say this is, uh, we, we all know this is R type instruction. So uh, if we look in the format, this is uh, the 10 is our destination and 11 and 12, they are source one and source two. So for R type instruction, what do we need to do? We need to perform read operation on register 11 and register 12 and we need to perform write operation on register 10 after performing the arithmetic operation so this part this part here uh, are register select and this is for write data or write back operation when uh, that means this two links one uh, this link and this link this will carry data coming from register uh, let's say write it in this way uh, data coming from register 11 and this link this link will carry data coming from register 12 okay now this two data goes to the alu and Control unit sends ALU operation like since this is add instruction, so control unit sends control signal that would uh, let the ALU perform the add operation on these two data. So this this link will uh, give the result of the content that we have uh, inside register 11 and inside register 12. So this content now needs to perform uh, needs to transfer to the uh, destination register in this case, which is register 10 and we call this operation as write back. So this uh, will go to here. Uh, so this is our uh, write back. This one will perform our write back operation. In, so now if we uh, if we go a bit further, then these two links, they are going to be 32 bits in length, which means there will be 32 links here. Uh, and this this one will also be 32. And we, we know that these are five bits because this, this selects the register, two for source and one for destination. And why five bits? Because two to the power five is equal to 32 and we have 32 registers inside register file 0 to 31 so we need five bits here five links will be here to select source and destination so this is how r type instruction executes load store instruction load store which is i type instruction which is I type instruction and in case of I type instruction we all know that we need to have a sign extension hardware this is our sign extension hardware where 16 bit value is a, a 16 bit value comes at input and a 32 bit sign extended value uh, goes at output and in a load store instruction we need to uh, perform operation on the data memory inside the data memory for load 
we perform a read operation and for store we perform write operation inside the data memory obviously this is just the data memory part that is shown in this uh, that is shown in this diagram but uh, we also have the associated part with it that means the part uh, the program counter part the instruction memory part register file part so all those parts are uh, here but uh, since uh, data memory is the new hardware or new component that is required for performing load store operation so only that component is shown in this diagram as well as sign extension hardware that is uh, that is uh, also shown in uh, in this diagram later we'll see a complete data path of r type i type r type and i type instructions uh, in later uh, slide 